Welcome back to Track Talk. We're going to be doing a game of 1846, but before we jump into that, just as a channel update, um, I have been trying to record more 1846 than some of the other titles over the last week or two, just to round out the um, content on the channel. We've done a lot of 1830, um, some 1889, just really focused on the 1830 family. So I've been trying to get some non 1830 style games in there. Um, unfortunately, most of my experience is with that uh, family of games. So it's a little bit harder for me. Um, I am working on getting up to speed with some other titles, um, specifically 1817 and um, 1862, but it's going to be probably a couple of months before I can really bring quality uh, commentary to those titles. So for the time being, we're going to be sticking with the current uh, titles, but I will try to um, keep the um, roster rotating between them so it doesn't get stale. Um, with all that said, let's hop right in. Many of these players are familiar to the channel. Um, they tend to play quite a bit of 1846, so they reappear in the uh, stream frequently. We will jump into the auction, and it looks like Count Von Blucher is leading us off. He has the Chicago Western, Michigan Southern, and Michigan Central. Um, pretty good privates. They are some of the more expensive privates, I guess, with the exception of Michigan Central. But I don't know that you can necessarily go wrong with any of these, so hard for me to predict what he's going to choose. Trains, he has Boomtown, Steamboat, Big Four, Little Miami, and Mail. So I assume he won't be picking up Mail, and we'll just have to wait until the next round to see what he picks here. Michigan Central. Chicago and Western and Steamboat are now available. So we know that Count didn't pick either of those two. Maybe he picked up the Michigan Southern. And Batsman, if I was him, I would probably be leaning towards the Chicago and Western. Mad Fedor has a bunch of, actually doesn't have that many passes, just two. So someone might be picking up passes early in this uh, draft. Big Four, Mail Contract, Boomtown, Chicago and Western. And, um, Again, Chicago and Western is probably my favorite private, so we'll see if he's able to pick that up. Count Von Blucher, he did take the Michigan Southern. That's interesting. Probably would have been my least preferred of the three that he had available, but not to say he's wrong. He now has the Michigan Central and Mail, also big four. I missed that at the bottom. Um, if I'm him, I might be tempted to take a pass here and just see how the rest of the draft breaks. Trains, he took Little Miami and... He also has Big Four and Chicago Western. I wonder if he would try and pick up the Big Four here um, to synergize. Little Miami has Cincinnati or Dayton, which would be pretty nice for the Big Four. He um, has taken his choice. Batsman took Steamboat. Um, can't afford a more expensive private now. I'm very surprised to see Chicago and Western lasting this late in the auction. Um, I think he's probably going to pick pick that up. Mad Fedor, he took Boomtown last time and will probably be taking a pass here. So everybody's going to be passing probably and we'll see how expensive they want to go for this mail contract. He is passing count. He passes at 70 trains. Actually takes it for 60 it looks like. So Mad Fedor ends up with just a single private, Boomtown. Batsman has uh, $100 worth of privates in Steamboat and Chicago and Western. Trains Vestite, he has Little Miami, Big Four, and Mail. And then Count Von Blucher has Michigan Southern and Michigan Central. Trains, he spent the most in the auction, and Mad Fedor has priority and spent the least. He has Boomtown, so does he want to look towards the B&O or the C&O somewhere south? Um... Well, I guess if you were to start the C&O, you run the risk of being tokened out by the B&O for yellow, so maybe not the safest strategy there. He may look towards the B&O. Um, he could also just take the ick, deny that for one of the players that pay, uh, paid more money in the draft, and use the uh, Boomtown later in potentially green with uh, the ick. Let's see. So he will take the B&O. He pars it... Um, at 90, it looks like. So kind of a middling par, higher end, I would say, of really what I tend to see as viable pars. Um, and now Batsman is up. He has Chicago and Western and Steamboat, so probably not 
very motivated to take motivated to take the ick just because he has the teleport and the steamboat doesn't really synergize very well b and o has been taken so um, that's also a company that works okay with the steamboat um, c and o for reasons we just discussed may not be the best um, i'm not sure what he will be taking here let's see he takes the GT. He does deny that from Count von Blucher, which is um, potentially nice for him. Pars it above. Mad Vidor will be operating behind him in the first operating round as a result. Trains, he spent a lot of money, so the fact that the Ick is still available is going to be a real boon to him. I think he's going to be taking that for sure. He instead takes the NYC. That's surprising. So not only does he miss out on the Treasury bonus, but it's also... Um, not really great synergy for his privates. I'm surprised that he made that decision. He will be operating early in the first set, or not the first set, but the first operating round. Cal von Blucher um, spent only $20 less than trains in the draft and has had his GT stolen from him. So probably gonna be starting the ick here. And he does. I'm surprised that trains didn't take that. I don't, uh, I'll be curious to see how the NYC works out for him. Mad, Mad Fedor is buying a third share in his own company. Batsman can also buy a third share in the GT if he wants. And he does. The other players don't have enough money for shares, and Mad Fedor rounds us out with a fourth share of the B&O. This will leave Batsman with priority into the next um, stock round. The minor companies are up. Actually, it is kind of interesting to see where Steamboat um, ends up here. So he places on D14. Let me turn on the hexes. And D14 is Toledo. So Batsman running the GT. Makes sense. He's going to be heading towards Toledo. Okay, fair enough. Minor companies now. Michigan Southern. He's laying friendly track for the GT. And then he's going to be rushing over to Chicago, it looks like. Um, that's not really helpful for him, and it's helping the GT, so a little bit surprised to see him doing that. Maybe he's just doing this to make it harder for the GT to run into Toledo now that he's declared where the steamboat is. But that um, hurts him in some sense, but helps him get to Chicago a little bit earlier in another, so um, not necessarily devastating. Big Four, he is owned by the NYC. I see. So maybe the NYC is just hoping to teleport to the big four. Um, that makes a little bit more sense. I missed that in the first stock round. Big four, he is heading to Terre Haute, maybe looking to get into Chicago a little bit earlier. And now we have the first player at owned uh, major company, b almost certainly going to be teleporting to Cincinnati. He issues for some cash and is going to head towards Cincinnati. Does he immediately lay down to Louisville, or does he look to look up, uh, link up with Indianapolis? Looks like Louisville for now, and he will pick up two two trains. NYC, does he immediately head over to Indi Indianapolis? He's gonna be looking to run into Cleveland, but interestingly, he doesn't lay the sharp turn, um, which would allow him to run two trains out of uh, Cleveland, the sharp turn city was taken. That was laid on Cincinnati. So I actually have not seen that interaction before. I don't think I've seen um, the track tightness of the um, tile roster impact uh, the start as dramatically as it just has. That's bad news for the NYC. I have to assume that was intentional on the b &O player's part. Um, so well played to him. NYC, is he going to issue any shares here? Looks like it, and he will pick up, it looks like, probably two, two trains. And he does buy in his private and gets a third two train from the Big Four, so that will be the end of the operations of the Big Four. GT, he's going to be looking towards Toledo still, it looks like, so no rush for him to get over to Chicago. But um, as a result of the track laid by the Michigan Southern, can't quite get there um, this operating round. He picks up probably the last two, two trains. And does he pick up the green train now? Looks like he does. So the ick is going to be denied any of those um, nice two trains, except for the one in the Michigan Southern, which he'll probably buy in here. 
he issues shares and gets a token on Detroit, and now he's able to head into De Toledo um, actually before the Grand Trunk is able to. Instead, he's going to be continuing on his merry way over to Chicago, and he buys the first uh, green train in the game. He can buy a second one, actually, and he's going to pass for now. Next operating round, Steamboat, staying on Toledo. There's no private companies anymore, or not private, uh, minor companies anymore, and we will have the GT leading us off. He is going to upgrade Toledo. Does he immediately token there to run the Steamboat? He does, so he'll be able to run two trains out of Toledo in uh, green now. He is running for 250, which is pretty good, going to be enough for a double jump, um, but he will have to full pay to do that, and he does has a pretty healthy treasury, four shares in there. Um, all of them are going to be, of course, rebuilding his company cash. He buys his private, and he's able to secure um, an east-west run for himself very early with uh, the use of that private. Ick now, he's probably going to be linking up with Chicago, if I had to guess, and may just uh, lock down that token. Not under immediate competition for it, but... Um, you need to worry a little bit about losing out if you don't just token it right away. So he is buying his other private and laying some track with it. He upgrades Port Huron. This is going to give him an east-west run um, once Chicago is upgraded. And he actually does not um, lay towards Chicago. So he's not in any rush, it looks like. He's going to run for 210. Again, enough for a double jump as long as he full pays. He half pays and will only be moving once as a result. But this um, gives him enough money for easily another um, green train. Is he going to pick one up here? He does. I think he had money to do that uh, in the last operating round. So surprised that he's taking the opportunity to do it now and not running it um, if he had bought it earlier. B and O, um, working in Cincinnati. Does he head up towards Indianapolis? Of course, if he does, that's also helping the NYC. Um, he's instead, going to get a second run into Louisville and running his two trains quite well. He is um, paying out for two twenty with just two two trains. That's great. He's going to be able to double jump with a full pay. He redeems a share as well, and then pays out. He can't afford the cheaper green train, which I assume he will see him pick up. He will, so no risk of him falling back when the um, permanent trains come out. And last train, to, uh, last company to operate in this operating set. Be curious to see if he upgrades since uh, Cleveland or if he starts working over to Chicago from Indianapolis. He's going to issue another share and buy in some privates. And he upgrades his home, doesn't actually upgrade in Cleveland. So not going to be running all that well, um, even with three two trains. Running for 210, could have run for a lot more, I think, with different track decisions. And he full pays, it looks like. So Batsman has priority. He has second most cash just behind trains. Um, Count von Blucher is pretty close as well. Mad Fedor is a little bit of a uh, cash deficit, but he is the share leader. So the other players may be able to match him, but they, I don't think they'll be able to overtake him. All these shares are pretty close to the same price. Most of these players are going to be buying two with the exception of Mad Fedor, it looks like. In terms of rusting events, um, there is one green train left. So if the for instance, GT is able to operate before um, everybody else and able to, well, actually, he's going to be train locked with uh, his trains. He's not going to be able to buy that permanent train. So he would have to buy the last green train and then hope that the Ick, for instance, um, would buy the first permanent train. And I'm just pointing out that um, operating order here could matter. If you operate late in this upcoming operating order around, you really run the risk of not having... Um, a run on your two trains 
relative to the other players. Not that they'll rust, but they'll obsolete first. The NYC in particular is in a little bit of a rough spot, going to be operating last as it stands right now, and also does not have a green train. So very high likelihood of um, these two trains basically rusting before anybody else, uh, or after everybody else's have already run. We'll see. I don't think anybody will be floating the company here. The CNO and the Erie are still viable. Um, yeah, very much so, it, it being so early. But they don't really have the liquidity to do it, and I'm sure that they're looking for paying shares instead. If I was looking for paying shares, um, the revenue of the GT is technically the highest, and is that likely to change? He does have worse trains than the Ick, and the Ick has pretty equivalent track. So the Ick probably, if I had to guess, is going to have the highest revenue in the next operating round. Um, BNO, I suppose, is a contender as well. Probably not the NYC. So I think any of the first three companies would be reasonable. The um, Ick and BNO are moderately cheaper than the GT, of course and um, we'll see what they decide. Uh, none of these players can clear their own market, really. Um, I guess Count could... Well, that's not true. Count and Trains could clear their own markets without help, and we'll see if the other players allow them to do that. Mad Fedor and Batsman are not going to be able to. So Batsman's going to help and actually clear the market for Mad Fedor, potentially. Trains, he is buying a GT, he buys it from the Treasury. Count, he is buying an Ick and from the market. So if the GT falls back, he will actually be operating last, um, which is probably to the benefit of the NYC. So it makes sense not to buy the market shares there. Mad Fedor, he is buying an Ick as well, and he buys it from the Treasury. Batsman, Last share for him, he's buying his GT from the market. Trains, last share for him as well. He will pick up a NYC. So right now, both of those companies falling back. Count, he is going to clear the market of the ick, so potentially going to be running first in the next operating round, unless Mad wants to do something about that. Um, Mad Fedor probably doesn't care that much though. He's not at risk of falling back and he is currently going to have priority into the next stock round if he doesn't do anything here. So I don't imagine he's going to sell that ick share. And he immediately does that, so it shows when I know. Matt Fedor, he now buys a NYC. Um, hmm, I'm not sure about that. You sacrifice priority and you buy a share that's probably going to be worse. That's been passing. Trains also selling a GT, so not really changing anything because that is still going to be falling back, but he can now clear his NYC market share, which he does. Is Mad Fedor going to allow that to occur? He's not, and now maybe he's going to pick up the GT share? Um, he can't clear his own market, and he just buys a B&O. Huh. All right. So I guess he just was hoping to ensure that the other trains would fall back. So I don't think um, operating order changes here. Everybody, everybody fell back. Yeah. All right. So we'll see if the NYC gets to run its two trains um, before they obsolete or not. I think that is a really big deal um, that can't really be underestimated. He's upgrading Toledo, going to be running better, probably running two trains through there. And he's able to redeem a share. Running for $280, $30 increase. And he, actually, sorry, he's running for $330, um, which is a $80 increase, so great. And he is able to buy that last green train. So this is setting um, the ick or the B&O up for the alley-oop and um, to really mess with the NYC by buying that first permanent train. Ick, he is, he's got 200 bucks in the coffers right now. The um, first rank of permanent trains, 450. So definitely with a withhold can get there. Um, and then if he issues shares, he could also pretty easily get there. We'll see how motivated he is to do that. This hurts not just the NYC, but also the B&O. B&O has two, um, two trains and um, a single green train. 
I think that um, if I'm playing here, I would, under basically any circumstance, ensure that I'm able to rust these other players' trains. It's not as devastating as it would be in 1830 style game because there's that obsolete um, soft rust, but it's still, um, I think, a really big deal. He's going to lay into Chicago. Does he take the token here? He instead is toking in Toledo. Um, this is going to make it a little bit harder for him to bring out that train, but I think it should still be well within his abilities. And he's also upgrading Chicago. Okay, so it has an east-west run now or should, from Port Huron to Detroit. Yeah, he does. He issues shares, and I think he's going to have no trouble um, reaching this permanent train threshold. Running for 310, he half pays and will be able to pick up that first permanent train. So I think that's the right play under all circumstances or um, basically any um, ability to do that, I think, is the right move. b &O, um, still going to run his trains, but they are um, not long for this world. He upgrades Cincinnati and looks like he's going to be heading east. This helps the NYC modestly, um, going to allow it to link up to Cincinnati without much trouble. I assume there's another um, gentle city as I struggle to find the tile roster. There's plenty of them, so he will have no trouble doing that. He is running for 370. He issues shares and full withholds that that hurts that's painful um and he's going to be able to pick up a brown train picks up the um more expensive one and he's not going to have an east-west run for the foreseeable future going to take him a couple operating rounds to get there nyc all of his trains are obsolete uh he really missed out on the green phase i don't think that was entirely necessary that he do that he has cash um, and could have picked the, the train that the GT ended up buying. So a little bit of a mistake there, I think. Um, the green trains, all the trains in 1846, I think, are pretty good. Um, I think that missing out on a rank and then having to buy the more expensive rank and potentially withhold to do it is pretty painful. Laying Columbus as expected, does he drop a token in Cincinnati? Uh, not going to token for now. And he runs his three trains for 270. We'll probably have to full withhold here. And actually, with an issue, can um, probably just pay and afford a permanent train. So he full pays and is going to pick up the cheaper 46 train. Next operating round, GT is up. Um, two trains can be obsolete, but of course, he gets an extra run of them relative to the IC and the BO, which is great for him. He is issuing some shares, and he's looking towards Cleveland. The NYC lost out on the token on Cincinnati. Does the GT just snap that up? Uh, he's going to pass a token for now. Okay. I guess Cincinnati is bypassable through Dayton and Indianapolis, so not the end of the world. He's paying for 550, really monstrous. And he half pays, but is still able to double jump, about to exit the restricted area of the market, which is great news for him. Is he going to start redeeming some of these shares? He buys a second uh, permanent train. I guess it probably wouldn't have made sense for him to redeem the shares right after he issued them. Um, so GT probably has, he's going to have a hard time affording one of these more permanent or more expensive permanent trains, but he has um, very good trains for the time being. NYC running a 4-6. And actually there was a um, skip in, or not a skip, a, a transition in operating order. The NYC has somehow started to operate over the IC. And is that because the IC half paid last time? Yes. Um, so he wasn't um, able to double jump probably. Well, he should have been. No, he couldn't um, because he half paid. NYC. He is upgrading Terre Haute and just running his 4.6. Has a decent run for it, 260, and he pays out again. Pretty, pretty cash poor company at this point. The Ick now operating. He is issuing a share, and he's going to be running four trains. Should be running them very well. Upgrading Detroit into Brown. Can he run three trains out of there? I think he 
yeah, I think he probably can. That's going to be really, really strong. So he is running for 7-10. That is monstrous. That's the kind of run you don't usually see until later in the game when he's running two permanent trains or something like that. And he probably half pays here, gets a bunch of cash in the company for a better permanent train, and still is able to double jump. Let's see. He full pays. Okay. Um, well, he's going to be very rich. He's the sole investor in that company, has two shares in the treasury still, um, so is at least able to secure some token money with a full pay. And who's to say he can't do it again? Um, all these trains are... Um, you know, not going to immediately rust, they will obsolete. So he's going to have the same run at least, unless the tokens break poorly for him. B&O, where's B&O prioritized to get to? Um, could look to upgrade Indianapolis and start heading over to Chicago, but there's a little bit of a prisoner's dilemma here. Well, not really, actually. NYC can reach into Chicago without um, the B&O laying any track for him. So, and Bino cannot reach there in this uh, operating round, so he's probably going to be losing out on that token. And looks like the Ick is under no um, stress to get a token in Chicago, knows that he's pretty secure and has plenty of tokens to secure that later in the game. So I'm not really sure where the Bino is going to head. He might just upgrade um, Cincinnati and Cleveland and just hope to run a little bit better as a result. Could look to head over to St. Louis. I'm not going to reach it this operating round, unfortunately, for him. So, indeed, upgrading Cincinnati and just passing the rest of his track. He is going to be running for 410, not the greatest uh, with these longer trains. He redeems a share, and then I guess he's going to full pay here. Yeah. Okay, so taking stock of the game, um, Count Von Blucher is leading as a result of that monstrous run on the Ick. And the Ick is running third in operating order, but I think probably he's going to be able to um, get his market cleared. Um, I think other players are going to be excited to buy these shares. Is anybody looking to float a company? The CNO and the Erie are still very much viable. Um, plenty of tokens available along the southeast, and the CNO with a high par could be pretty sure of securing one of those. Um, Erie, same story. I mean, he can upgrade this tile or get into Cleveland quite easily. So maybe worthwhile floating a company here. Um, Batsman would have to sell a B&O to do it, almost certainly. Um, probably not super interested in um, uh, selling a GT. And he's the only player that really has a realistic chance of operating before the newly floated companies, if they are floated, would have to clear his market in order to do it, and is not going to be able to do it on his own. So none of these companies have great odds of operating before a new float. And the newly floated company is going to have to buy a permanent train, which would immediately obsolete everybody's um, four trains. Batsman, he's going to buy his own GT trains. He is buying an Ick, so kind of as advertised. Uh, these monstrous runs are going to be a little bit too hard for these players to pass up. Count, he's probably buying his own market share. He does. Mad Fedor buying a market share of the Ick. Batsman, is he going to jump on the Ick uh, bandwagon? He does. The treasury is sold out. Um, the Ick has 400 bucks towards its next permanent train, but if nobody pushes through to the... Um, last rank of permanent trains, he's going to be running really hot and with some half pays could easily um, afford a better train for himself in a couple of operating rounds. Trains, he has just enough money for another ick. Does he pick a second share? He does, and it looks like Count Von Blucher should be able to secure the final share and max out in the ick. Very good news for him. He does. Mad Fedor going to be buying his own b &O, and I don't know that anybody really wants to sell these ick shares. Um, we may just see Batsman maintain priority here. Count, oh, so Count had enough money for another share. That's good news for him. And that will leave Mad Fedor with priority, probably. And that's what happens. Um, Ick is floating up. He's able to operate before the NYC once again. And he is um, with three trains. So he is currently train locked. I was going to say maybe he could withhold and buy the first. Uh, 
last rank of the permanent trains and obsolete everybody's trains again, but not going to be possible for him. GT, happy to be running his three trains, and he is going to issue a share. Probably just needed some um, cash for track, and he looks to link up to get an east-west run of his own. Um, he actually didn't really need to do that um, for an east-west run as the ick is um, leaving that token slot in Chicago open, but maybe just planning for the future and trying to make it harder for the other companies to get into these northern token spots. He is running for 670, much better than his last run, and he half pays. That is still enough for a double jump. Ick, going to have a monster run here. He tokens in Cincinnati, just wants to secure that route um, for the late game when he's going to be picking up a 7-8 almost certainly, and he's going to be starting ahead towards St. Louis. He is running for only 660 this time. I think he lost a two train um, compared to his last run, perhaps. So running for a little bit less, but still um, very, very good. Trains, running a single train, going to have a pretty anemic run as a result. He does head up to Chicago, and he leaves that token available. Um, I guess he couldn't have issued for it, so that's going to be unfortunate because the B&O should be able to just upgrade Indianapolis and steal that. He has uh, token money. We'll see if he's interested in doing that. b &O immediately upgrades Indianapolis. And actually tokens in Indianapolis, not in Chicago. That is interesting. Um, was he worried about his run being cut? The GT or the Ick, I suppose, could do that. But bypassing Indianapolis is going to be a lot easier than it is to bypass a token in Chicago. Um, hmm. I guess he's only worried about competing for that slot with the NYC, and the NYC still doesn't have token money, so okay, reasonable. Of course, if someone wants to be nasty, they could um, take that slot. It's really only the ick that could do it. Take this slot in the south, block the other players from getting there, and then look to defend these two slots in the north and prevent them from having a run um, at all. That would be interesting. Bino, he's running his two trains, and still no east-west run, so running for 450, which he pays out. Next operating round, GT still running three trains. He is going to upgrade Toledo. That helps both him and the Ick, and he is redeeming shares. So I assume he's uh, going to be full paying here. He does. Ick, he upgrades Chicago. Does he finally drop a token anywhere? No, just going to be slowly heading towards Chicago or St. Louis. And does he half pay again? He does. Still able to double jump, so that's great. Um, he should have permanent train money easily. He does. So I imagine we won't be seeing too many more withholds or half withholds from him. He's got most of the money he's going to need for the rest of the game. Uh, the half paying here is probably putting him a little bit behind batsmen, yeah. But Batsman, on the other hand, is going to have a much harder time um, getting his permanent trains, potentially. Could issue or hope to have them sold, these more valuable shares. Um, so not unreasonable to just full pay while you're the sole investor in the company. NYC. He is, looks like, laying towards St. Louis still and is able to connect up. I don't, yeah, there's no way he has an east-west run. Um, he has to hit too many of these yellow cities. He's paying for 290, and he pays it out. Uh, Mad Fedor with the B&O. He is happy to have um, a link up with St. Louis. Is he able to take advantage of it now? He's actually not running it. So running for 480 and still not tokening Chicago. The NYC now has token money, so I'm a little bit surprised that he's not um, willing to secure that token. Next stock round. Um, Batsman, as noted, is slightly in the lead, but tied on shares for Count Von Blucher. He has priority, though, which may end up being relevant because this may very well be an operating round where someone is eager to float a new company. Um, the track remains pretty open, so the company that operates first um, relative to the CNO or the Erie is likely to secure itself a pretty good run. Um, and 
well, I guess you have to worry about these other companies operating before you messing things up. Um, the GT, the IC are guaranteed to operate before you. The NYC, not guaranteed and probably not likely it does. So you don't have to worry about those tokens. The IC and the GT both have one token left. And um, if the GT, for instance, were to operate before you in token Cincinnati, that might make uh, you a little bit sad. Not to say that you wouldn't eventually be able to bypass Cincinnati, but now that Indianapolis is tokened out and uh, some of the screen tracks have been laid, it's going to be a little bit harder. So not exactly safe um, to start one of these companies in terms of ensuring that you're going to have a great run. Matt Fedor, he is buying a GT, and Batsman immediately snaps up the Eerie. So we will see a max par float from him, and I assume he's just going to be buying the rest of these treasury shares with his uh, 300 bucks for the rest of the operating round, or stock round. Trains, he is our um, trailing player. The NYC has been struggling, and he does have capital to float, but he will have to sell pretty heavily out of the uh, ick in order to um, afford a permanent train. So I don't think it makes sense for him to float the CNO, especially because it's going to be operating off the Erie now. He buys a GT. Count, um, similar reasoning. He has a lot more cash than Trains does, but because the Erie is going to be operating first, I think the CNO is um, a little bit of a dead letter now. He is buying a GT as well, Mad Fedor. He, so everybody's just picking up these GT shares. Makes sense. It's going to run great, um, at least in the first operating round. And most likely later throughout the game. Batsman, he is buying the GT as well. So he secured his presidency in the Erie and is going to um, buy a paying share. Can buy one more share in the Erie and then issue three times um, to get close to permanent train money, but he's not going to be quite there, I don't think. Um, haven't done the math. He'll end up with 450 and then with three issues. Um, yeah, he will, he'll be close to the cheaper um, permanent train. So he should be able to pick that up without having to sell shares, really. Trains, he's going to be picking up a B&O. Count, does he pick up the last B&O? He does. Um, so basically only the NYC is left um, for people to invest in. I don't imagine they're going to help the Erie afford a permanent train. And Batsman, he picks up an Erie. Trains, no more um, shares for him. And Count, probably picking up an NYC, which he, he actually helps with the Erie. A little bit surprising to see that. Okay, so Matt Fedor has priority, and um, Batsman's going to be leading us off with the GT. Both the Ick and the GT will be able to run their trains before the Erie um, obsoletes them. So good news for them. The NYC does not have a train that's going to be on the chopping block. The B&O, unfortunately for him, does. Um, so this is mostly just going to affect the B&O. GT, he is upgrading track for the Erie. That makes sense. He is the president of that um, company. And he also is certainly not going to be tokening in Cincinnati as his company is probably looking towards that for its own token. He is going to pass any other track and just run. And does he full pay here? He does. So he has permanent train money, no need for him to worry about um, withholding at this point. Ick is looking to get into St. Louis without having to run through Centralia, always a nice perk. And he upgrades Dayton just for a few extra bucks, it looks like. He runs for 710 and he full pays. First operation of the Erie, soon we'll be seeing him issue quite heavily here. He is, what did he upgrade? He upgraded out of Terre Haute. So he's actually going to be able to get the token in Chicago. Pretty crazy that both the B&O and the NYC allowed this to occur. Um, I guess, yeah, the only question is, does he worry about being tokened out of Cincinnati? But I think he'll be able to bypass that if that happens. Um, only the NYC is looking to do that potentially. And it's not a super valuable token for the NYC, so I don't know that he's going to do that just out of spite. We'll see. But I assume Erie will be taking that Chicago token. He does. Um, pretty amazing that he's able to end up with that. I missed that that was a possibility, and I think the other players did too. Um, he's going to issue, and he easily affords a 7-8 if he wants it. This um, obsoletes the b and train, and now we have the NYC operating. So I think the most interesting thing here is to see if he's able to, or 
decides to token Cincinnati. He issues shares and actually doesn't do anything um, with the money for now. Probably going to be seeing some half pays from this player, um, which is going to prevent him from double jumping, uh, but he needs to get a second permanent train to have any chance in this game. But I think he'll be in last place. So he actually full withholds. Going to be closer to a permanent train, but it is painful as the sole investor um, to have to do that. BNO obsolete train and um, has lost probably the opportunity to get any tokens in Chicago. He's upgrading Cincinnati and looking to bypass some of these lower revenue cities, it looks like, in the later game. Running his two trains and he's paying out for 460 it looks like he actually full withholds so we'll be able to afford the cheap um, second permanent train but it's going to be um, kind of rough for him i don't know that he's going to have an easy east west run at least until he links up with wheeling that will be um, looks like that will be six if he doesn't have to hit centralia so gonna have to lay some um, track to open up the east west run for him GT, two obsolete trains, but happy is Clam going to be picking up the expensive 7-8 almost certainly. And he's not bothering with any track. Um, I think that he is telegraphing pretty heavily that he wants that expensive train then because um, he has just enough money. If he lays any track, he would have to partially withhold to afford it. Paying out for 700 and he full pays. He buys the 7-8. He doesn't really need a 7-8. Um, he doesn't have a long east-west run, um, but maybe looking to set himself up for one in the south. We'll have to bypass several cities to get there, I think. Well, I guess technically as it stands right now, um, without a token in Cincinnati, that's secured. But I have to imagine that the NYC, when both the Erie and the GT are running through Cincinnati, is going to shut that down. Ick, also two obsolete trains. He is... I guess just looking to optimize routes here. And he runs all three of his trains for 770 now. And also has, actually doesn't have permanent train money. So if he wants to pick up a permanent train here, it's a dollar short and it's going to have to half, half pay as a result. That will prevent him from double jumping, I think. Yeah, it certainly will. That's um, bad news for him. I wonder if it's worth those, those track lays for him. I don't know that it is. He actually tokened to Dayton. So putting a little bit of pressure on the Erie and um, the NYC to maintain these routes. Bino also has a token, so we'll be curious to see who gets these tokens. It is painful to have pay there, though. So he will pick up his second permanent train, and um, we'll certainly have two permanent train runs um, as a result of his tokens. So maybe just playing it conservatively wants to make sure that he is able to um, not be tokened out of Dayton. Erie's first run has a east-west run through um, Binghamton into Chicago Connections. He is looking to just actually um, not... Yeah, so he is bypassing a yellow city. Okay. And I'll be very curious to see where this token ends up. Um, I think he has to drop it either in Dayton or Cincinnati. I'm just curious to see where he decides is more valuable. Probably a little bit easier to bypass Dayton than Cincinnati. So he's going to pass the token. Interesting. I imagine that the NYC is um, looking to cut these runs. So I'm a little bit surprised to see that. It is painful to token your other company out, but you need to secure the run for at least one of your companies. He's running for 430, does hit the east-west bonus, and he pays that out. Trains, pretty close to permanent train money. We'll probably have to at least half withhold here, um, or half pay, I guess I should say, um, and may need to drop a token to secure his runs. Upgrading Terre Haute, and passing on the tokens. Hmm. We, see this, we saw this burn him on Chicago. It may very well burn him in Cincinnati as well. He is going to full withhold and affords the expensive 7-8 um, as a result. Bino running two trains, both permanent, and he is cash type, can't afford any track. So he's going to be paying out for 590 it looks like. He half pays. 
So bank is looking a little bit risky, um, 3,500, but we are still have an opportunity for the CNO to float. Cincinnati is open still. I think it's a mistake to float this company though. Um, a lot of companies will be operating before you and a lot of them are still token rich, able to token you out of Cincinnati. I don't think a token in Dayton gets you where you wanna go. So I would be very leery of floating the CNO in this situation. I assume the other players will be too. If you're losing in this game, you're probably trying to find ways to extend it. But I think, uh, unfortunately, starting the CNO may extend the game, but just cause you to lose even harder. Matt Fedor, he has plenty of cash and has three shares to pick up. There are, looks like, 11 shares available, so he is going to be able to buy um, all three. That's good news for him. Um, the players later in priority, specifically Count Von Blucher, are not going to be able to hit their cert, cert limit um, with only share, 11 shares available. Batsman, um, he is leader in the clubhouse, and he will be able to hit his cert limit um, and uh, probably takes this game as a result. Just looking at the spreadsheet for a second, Batsman has the highest revenue. I think there were some half withholds from other players' companies, so maybe not as quite a dominant um, revenue lead as that, but still a um, very commanding lead at this point in the game. Matt Fedor, he's going to buy an Erie Batsman, buying the NYC. So now that NYC has a um, second permanent train, maybe expecting the revenue to be higher than the Erie's single train. Really depends on how these tokens break, though, I think. Trains buying his own NYC count, buying an NYC as well. Mad Fedor, he is switching from the Erie purchase to the NYC. This company's almost sold out. And Batsman will take that last share. Trains, he is picking up the Erie, and he actually buys it from the Treasury. Count, probably the last share for him, unfortunately. Mad Fedor is going to hit his cert limit, so will Batsman, and Trains actually passing. Um, so he didn't have enough cash. Okay, well, that's good news for Count Von Blucher. I knew one of these players was not going to hit their cert limit. I just didn't realize that Trains was so poor. Um, so all three players in contention, so to speak, um, will meet their cert limit. Matt Fedor is trailing by enough that he's probably out. Um, Count Von Blucher also probably um, out of the game. He's going to be a cert behind Batsman, and he's already trailing by $600, so going to be a hard road for him to come back from. Everybody passes, and this will leave Matt Fedor retaining priority. GT running two permanent trains, um, has two permanent train runs, doesn't have the cash for his token, so not going to be able to secure that second run, but going to get it at least once here. And he's actually, at least for right now, running into Chicago instead of St. Louis. I'm a little bit surprised to see that. Um, I haven't done the math, but I assume he did and determined that this was more valuable than getting that east-west bonus. Ick, also running two permanent trains, also should have um, two permanent train runs. And he's going to link up with St. Louis, completing the bypass of Centralia. And he also, I guess, just trying to prevent other companies from getting into Chicago. But there should be a 46 or 45 that upgrades there that will allow them to run um, west from the south. I assume that is still available. Yeah, so the 46 here should be um, able to be placed there. So he's going to be running for 720, and he full pays. Eerie, single, permanent train. I think that he really needs to prioritize dropping this token somewhere to ensure that he's able to run it. And he upgrades Chicago, and still not going to be placing a token. I'm surprised to see this. Um, NYC doesn't have token money, so maybe that's why he's feeling comfortable leaving it open. Hmm. It's risky. Um, he will operate again if the NYC decides to withhold, so has the opportunity to secure the token. Um, B&O can't token Cincinnati, but can token Dayton, so even with the NYC unable to block him, doesn't mean that someone else can't. Running for 460, and he half pays. So I guess he's looking to pick up a second permanent train here. Um, this is fine, I think. He's pretty far ahead, 
And um, as long as he's able to run these trains, should be able to just continue to waltz to a victory. B and O, he is um, running two permanent trains. And is he looking to put this token anywhere? Upgrading Columbus and heading towards Wheeling. So looking to get an east-west run along the south. And he does token Dayton. So I think that's very bad news for Batsman. Whether or not it changes the outcome, um, we will find out shortly. But it is risky running two companies um, that need the same route because you're going to token one of them out, obviously, um, and then the other players are able to token both of them out if you don't um, fall on that grenade. He's running for 660, and it looks like he full pays. NYC also has that its runs cut, um, so he's going to be pretty sad about that. Does not have an east-west run and really is pretty much tokened out of a lot of the valuable revenue centers at this point. He is upgrading Cleveland and running for only 540, so probably going to be coming in last. Second operating round of the set, GT, as noted, has its run cut, doesn't have cash for track, and he's going to have to just make do with what's been left to him. He is running for 630, pretty big drop in revenue. The Ick, um, fortunately, um, was able to secure its runs. does have cash for track still, so probably just looking to prevent people from bypassing Dayton um, at this point, Dayton, Toledo. He is... I'm not sure what the purpose of that track upgrade is. Maybe just denying it to the other players. And he has two east-west runs, going to be running for 750. And probably just full pays, yep. B&O, happy to have that token in Dayton. Pretty important token. He is going to upgrade Dayton now. Does he... Well, he misses out on upgrading Wheeling, um, which I think was probably important for him. I guess he doesn't need that, actually. Um, he has an east-west run through Buffalo, so um, no big deal. He is going to be paying for 680 and he full pays. Eerie, um, pretty sad for him that his east-west run has been cut, and he is not going to be able to run his second permanent train very well either. I assume he half paid before. He probably wants to do that again to try and um, get a second train, but I worry for his uh, potential now that he has lost that on that token. He is looking to bypass Dayton and succeeds, so that'll be good for him. He is able to secure his east-west. And does he have pay again? He does, 480. Does he have any tokens that he can drop anywhere? So both the GT and the Erie have tokens. GT, unfortunately, doesn't have um, cash to use it. And Erie full pays, so he's actually, he half paid for nothing, it looks like, um, at least for right now. He's not picking up a second train. So it's good news for him that he was able to bypass Columbus. Um, very good news for the NYC as well. Um, but a little bit confused by the decision making in the last operating round. NYC, he is running an east-west route, and he's going to actually be able to pay for 700, it looks like. So he does. Um, I think I missed that the bank was breaking there, and it makes a lot more sense to play the way you did um, in that setting. So ensuring that the bank breaks instead of buying that second permanent train um, is important. Was Count Von Blucher going to overtake him in terms of revenue? Um, probably not. He was only running for $100 more. So I think Batsman was safe either way. Um, and the fact that he was able to bypass the tokens in Dayton um, really made that um, win assured. Um, but yeah, so the bank broke. Um, I missed that it was going to. How close was it? A uh, thousand dollars left in the bank. So it broke on um, the second to last operation of the uh, third last operation of the game. It was pretty close. Um, if anybody had floated uh, the CNO or had bought a permanent train, we may have seen another set of operating rounds. But again, I don't think that changes the outcome here. So um, not the most relevant. Well played to Batsman. Um, very nice um, ability for him to just develop track. And he was able to hold on to tokens and not waste them unnecessarily. Um, 
which is uh, great to see. Um, if you don't have to withhold for tokens that you don't need, then of course that's more efficient and that little bit of uh, you know extra revenue can give you the win. Count von Blucher played pretty well. Um, he was able to obsolete other players' trains and cause them to fall back. I think trains um, just was a victim in this game from the start, basically. Um, he was the um, player that had all of his two trains uh, obsoleted and wasn't able, really able to secure routes for himself. Had a good idea of teleporting the NYC um, west with the big four, and it didn't really work out for him. And then was blocked from running a bunch of trains into Cleveland in yellow as a result of the Toledo track, which was very nice. I think that was actually... It was the Cincinnati track from the B&O that prevented him from that. So very nice play from Mad Fedor. Unfortunately, not quite enough to put him uh, ahead for the win. Anyway, uh, interesting things in this game, things that I haven't seen before in 1846. So I hope it's uh, an interesting watch for the viewer. Track Talk will be back in the future with additional commentary. Thanks for listening.